exhausted from being at the pool all afternoon, uh, or sitting on the bridge catching catfish. So both are good. Both are good. I feel good about both of those. Um, we're good. Y'all gotta give me one second. I get a few things. Sit down right here. It's gonna be. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. All right, beautiful thing. Like that, and things like Mount Everest and 
beautiful, wonderful things, and everything was perfect. Everything was absolutely perfect. Um, and one of the things that he made in the midst of all of his creating of stuff um, is he made some people, right? He made two people. One's name was Adam, and the other's name was Eve. Okay, so there was Adam and Eve. Um, we just got a picture of Adam here uh, hanging out with us tonight. Eve is on vacation because it's boys camp, so we just got Adam tonight. And, uh, and so whenever he took Adam and Eve, he put them in a garden that was perfect. They were in perfect community with one another. They were in perfect community with God. And at the center of Adam's heart, what he loved most was God. He loved God most because uh, he saw that God was good. And he walked with God and he enjoyed God and he glorified God. He showed God off as most valuable. He enjoyed God as most valuable and he honored and obeyed God as most valuable. But that's not how the story ends, is it? That's not, that's not how the story ends. Unfortunately, um, something happens, right? Um, the serpent was in the garden of Adam and Eve. Um, they, he said, hey, why don't you eat some of this fruit? They decided to believe the lie instead of believe the truth. Uh, they believed the lie of the serpent, and they ate of the one tree that God said, don't eat of it, right? He gave them this whole entire garden. There was one tree that they could not have. They could have tr fruit from any other tree in the whole garden, um, and they ate from the one tree that they couldn't have any piece of. And so what happened when he did that? Um, is he sinned, right? It was the first time the sin ever entered our world, right? And so God made Adam clean and pure like this glass of water, right? He was clean and pure before God. And then Adam and Eve, they sinned, right? They sinned, and all of a sudden, their lives were polluted. And it wasn't just... Um, it wasn't just their actions that were polluted, but instead it changed the very um, basic pieces of who they were so that no longer did they glorify God as most valuable and see Him as most valuable, right? This heart that had God at the center, whenever Adam and Eve sinned, this heart, it was broken, right? And they didn't have that heart anymore. They didn't enjoy God as most valuable any longer. And you know what he had at the center of his heart instead? He had a heart that showed and honored and enjoyed himself as most valuable. Right? So no longer does he um, honor and glorify God. Instead, he decided to honor and glorify himself. And he was no longer pure, right? He was tainted and dirty and gross. Well, um, God is good, right? God's good. Um, but he's, he's not just good. Um, God is also holy. He's completely perfect. Um, and he is separate from sin, right? Sin is, um, is disgusting and horrible. Um, and if you... Um, I think sometimes we just don't realize um, the offense that sin is. And we become used to it and it feels normal. But the reality is, is that sin is disgusting and it is horrible. And God is holy, and He will not be in the presence of sin. He's completely separate from it. He's not going to be with sin. And so Adam and Eve, they were sinful. And because God is holy and separate from sin, He was separated from Adam. He sent Adam and Eve out of the garden um, so that they would no longer be with Him. Right? And they would no longer be with Him. Um, and they walked out of the garden. God still continued to provide for them um, in some ways. And Adam and Eve began to have children, right? They had babies, and then those babies, they grew up, and then they had babies, and then those babies, they grew up, and they had babies, and then babies, and babies, and babies, and babies, um, all the way down to you guys and to me, okay? Um, and so whenever Adam and Eve, they had babies, um, those babies, they share uh, some of the characteristics of mom and dad, right? They look kind of like mom. They look kind of like dad. Um, they learn some things from mom and dad. Um, and one thing that Adam, that Adam and Eve's kids picked up was a heart like Adam's, a heart with a self at the middle of it, right? Self at the center of it. Um, a heart that shows, honors, and enjoys self as the most valuable and when those kids had kids, and those kids had kids, and when they grew up and they had kids, and those people grew up and they had kids, we eventually came along, 
and you and I, we got hearts like Adam, right? Self at the center of it. So when you were born, when I was born, we were born with hearts that have ourselves at the very center. And we show and honor and enjoy ourselves as the most valuable. Right? No longer are we born with hearts that are eager to see God made much of. Um, we don't see His goodness, but instead, um, we're like the cup, right? We're like Adam. We're dirty. We're polluted. We're guilty, right? And we're separated from God. We're born separated from God. God is all good. He is what is best. And we are separated from the thing that is very best from us, right? We are separated from God, who is the very best thing for us. Um, and we have... No relationship with him. Um, and, and, and it just kind of gets worse from there. Okay? You're like, what? Worse? It seems I just got separated from the world. best thing ever. Um, does it get worse than that? It does. Um, it does get worse than that. Okay? Um, God is good, um, and he's holy, and he is just. He is right to punish sin. So God punishes sin, um, and he ought to. Okay? If he did not punish sin, he would be wicked. Right? If he did not punish sin, he would be wicked. He would be a bad judge. And so um, God does punish sin, and he ought to. And it is right for him to punish sin um, in the same way that it is right for the police to take somebody to jail who's broken the law. Right? Um, it is right for him to be that way. Um, but, but you and I, right? We're sinful, and so that means we deserve God's punishment. We're separated from God, but then we also deserve His punishment. And everywhere that God sees sin, He hates it, and He punishes it, okay? And so for us, as we're full of sin, like Adam, we have hearts that are full of sin, we receive and deserve God's punishment. Uh, the word for that is wrath, all right? The word for that is wrath, that we deserve God's punishment and his anger and his wrath is towards us everywhere that sin is. And because we are sinful, his wrath is towards us. Towards you, it's towards me. And they think, Matt, now you told us this was good news. And this is not sounding very good, right? It doesn't seem very good. Um, it, right, it's not good to this point, right? We're separated from the very best thing for us. Um, and we are under his right and perfect judgment, deserving of his anger and of his wrath, right? The one that we should be in close relationship with, we are far from, and he is angry at our sin. That's not a good, and he's rightly angry, right? It's not like he's just an, an angry, mad person. Uh, he's right to be angry at our sin because we have messed up deeply, right? We're all guilty. We're all guilty. Um, and so here's kind of here's where we're going to kind of turn the corner. We're going to see the good news, right? Um, the good news is um, that while God, uh, I mean, all these are good news to this point, right? Except they're just not good news for us. Um, God is good, and that's good news. God is holy, and that's good news. And God is just, and that's good news. Um, and then we all have an opportunity to breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, we see that God is loving. He does what is best. Um, so that God looks down on earth and he sees our deep need. He knows that we are guilty. He knows that he's going to punish sin, right? He knows that. And he sees our deep need. Um, and so what he does is he sends Jesus to earth. And so Jesus is fully God. Um, he was there at the beginning creating the world creating the heavens, creating the stars, and he was born as a baby man, right? A baby boy. He was born uh, into this earth, and something that's, um, that's real cool about Jesus, I mean, there's lots of stuff that's real cool about Jesus, but one thing that makes him very, very different from you and me is that whenever Jesus was born, he didn't have a heart of self in the middle. He was born with a heart that loved God. He had God at the center of his heart. They showed and honored and enjoyed God as most valuable. He just, he just got it. He understood that God is more valuable than anything else. And so he loved God and he honored him and he enjoyed him, right? And so Jesus, when he lived a perfect life, um, he spent his life teaching people what God was like, doing miracles, serving the poor, loving on the people that no one else loved, um, caring for the needy, 